Growing up everyone said Dabi was patient compared to his siblings. Natsuo always dived headfirst into things, never resting or calming down until something was done. Fuayumi was more mannered than her brothers but when she got excited there was no point in taming her. The two of them never were able to wait long for anything but poor little Tai would always sit still. Waiting always came easy for him that is until he learned waiting got you killed on the streets. Now he feels the need to rip his hair out because a certain brat and his boss haven't shown up yet and the roof he's on is fucking freezing. He pulled his jacket tighter as he murmured, this is bullshit. Deku had told him that Endeavor would be patrolling this area that day and yet Dabi hadn't caught a signal sight of the flame hero. Part of him wished he'd just stayed at home and left the green gremlin to do his own stuff. Why on earth did he think a 15-year-old would be a reliable source? For all he knows this is trapped to get him caught by the authorities. Then again, why would Deku, Akarevite the wanted vigilante, as the media was now calling him, try to turn him in? Especially when he's apparently a valuable player in his plan. Grumbling he pulled out his phone. He better check if something went wrong. Maybe Endeavor took a different route than originally planned. Me. I'm not seeing any action Deku. If you lie to me I will not hesitate to kill you in your sleep. Annoying fucker. You sure have patience I'm sure villain fight's about to happen relax. Me? It's her neck if there's not. He meant it partially. He hates that for once in his life he actually needs someone and can't just dispose of them whenever he wants. Revite. As much as he hates to admit, is the most useful person on the market. Somehow he can require information with the snap of his fingers and he's got a massive platform. Dabi discovered using Revite's name and the market gets people information. He's had too many people come up to him claiming they worked alongside the vigilante and were willing to trade information. Course, Dabi could call bluff. Besides that, Revite is smart and an analyst. If he wants anyone to show him how to take down Endeavor, it'd be him. He's got inside access to Endeavor and it's literally his job to know the man's moves. Dabi had forced him over text the other night to make sure he can keep others away from killing Endeavor before he can. The nerd said something about about hacking the systems later so only he can access information from outside the actual agency building. He's smart, he'll give him that. Which is exactly why he has to wait until after Endeavor is defeated to kill him. The worst part is Deku knows this and is fully willing to put up with his empty threats all the while being a little shit. Dabi frowned. As long as he doesn't get attached he can terminate him later. It'll be no problem. His gaze flicked to the city skyline. It was around midday and the sun was nearly blinding. He squinted. With the wind colder than usual up on the rooftop. He was glad his skin was resistant to the cold due to his genetics. It may suck when using his quirk but at least he was never really cold. A flash of red caught his eye. He trained his vision on a single feather floating in front of him, swaying from side to side. He narrowed his eyes, watching it slowly drift to a stop on the concrete roof he was sitting on. It was strange to see a feather like that so high up, especially one the color of red. Reaching his hand out to touch it he felt something tug at his gut, like someone was watching him. The feather suddenly lifted up into the air and zipped past him. His eyes widened as he heard a chuckle come from next to him. He whipped his head around to spot where the feather had came from. Sitting just a few feet away from him was a man around his age with great big red wings attached to his shoulder blades. Golden hair lay in messy locks on his head, quite untamed but still somehow looking decent. His eyes were a matching gold outlined in dark eyeliner, little ticks by the corners of his eyes. A brown jacket hung off his shoulders and yellow headphones were nestled over his ears. A hero? Dabby forced his face into a blank expression. Hey, sorry if I startled you, the bird man smiled and rubbed at the back of his neck. It's not every day I see someone hanging out on a roof like this. Well, besides me of course. He eyed the man warily. I'm not startled. Okay, whatever you say, he shrugged, pulling a sandwich out from the inside pocket of his jacket. He noted it was chicken and scrunched his nose up. Is that not cannibal-like considering the dude's wings? What was this poor excuse of a man and a bird even doing here anyways? He's clearly a hero, doesn't he have somewhere else to be other than just pissing him off? Dabby's got things to do, assholes have fathers to watch, he doesn't need a bird to bothering him. What are you doing? He ground out, annoyed. Eating. I can see that, he rolled his eyes. What are you doing here and why haven't you left? Bird Brain glanced at him mid-bite. He put his sandwich down. I don't know. I'm bored and you seem interesting. I've got nothing better to do and from the looks of it neither do you so just calm your ass down and enjoy the company of the number three hero. You seem so tense, jeez. Dabby glared while trying his best to subtly loosen up his shoulders that were nearly to his ears from how tense he was. The number three hero, huh? This day couldn't get any worse. Fuck. He shouldn't say that knowing his whole day is being organized by Deku. The little shit seems to always manage to fuck up everything. Why him? Why on the day he was going to get closer to taking down his father did the number three hero have to show up? He's heard the rumors that Endeavor and another high-ranking hero were forming some sort of alliance and he prays to all that's out there that this man next to him isn't that hero. The only plus side to if he is then maybe he wouldn't have as much of a problem killing him for being annoying with his stupid sandwich and red feathers. A scowl reached his lips. I hate heroes. Fuck off already. You hate heroes? Why am I not surprised? he said, leaning back a little. He smirked. You know, maybe I can change your mind. I assure you, you can't, Dabby stated. Who did this guy think he was? Why wasn't he leaving already? 
It's pretty obvious Dabby isn't interested so he should just flap those little wings of his and piss off. You a vigilante or something? You a vigilante or something? He mocked in his head. Gods, people are annoying. This, this is why he lives alone in an abandoned flat. He rather not deal with people at all. Deke who's lucky he's putting up with him. Even that brat gets annoying after a few minutes. A huff escaped his lips as he turned to look away from Bird Brain. Down below in the streets he saw people shuffling around just trying to reach their destination. His eyebrows tugged together. Still no sign of endeavor. He's really starting to doubt whether Revite's an accurate source or not. I asked you a question, Bird Brain said, poking at him. Dabby growled at the contact. Shoving the pesky hero away he grumbled, Do I look like a care? I won't turn you in if you are a vigilante. I don't mind them. It's actually nice when heroes don't have to do so much work because of a vigilantes. So he's just a lazy hero. It's a wonder he's made it to the top three. Dabby ignored him again, eyes following the citizens below. He frowned. They were moving faster than before, most frantically. Distantly his ears picked up the sound of sirens. Just a block or so down, he could make out plumes of smoke rising in the air. A villain fight. Shouldn't you be checking out that fire, hero he said, nudging his head in the direction. At least he'll get the little birdie away from him now. Trying to get rid of me so fast, he teased drawing a glare formed Dabby before lifting a hand to tap his headphones and speaking into them. Does anyone know what's going on by 42nd Street? Yeah, villain. Okay. I'm on my way. Endeavor and Alloy. Got it. Thanks. Endeavor. Dabby sat up straight, moving to his feet in time with the man next to him. Deku was right. He was patrolling this area. The villain must have pulled him off route. Finally. Things are turning out his way. If he can get a close look at Endeavor's fighting style then maybe he can adjust his own so he can take him down when Revite is ready. He's just got to get over there. Duty calls, Bird Brain said, saluting him. Catch a later vigilante. Villain Dabby muttered under his breath just as the hero dived off the building, gliding towards where the smoke was coming from. Lucky bastard has wings to get him there. He frowned. How the fuck is he going to get over there in time? He glanced at the building next to him. That can't be his only option. He leaned over the edge as he checked how far the drop was. Fuck. He's really going to do this. He took a deep breath, bending his knees before leaping across the gap between buildings. A yelp escaped his lips as he rolled to soften his landing on the next roof. He stood and looked back at the building he just came from. He didn't fall and he's still alive. Now just to do that seven more times. Great. Each jump got easier and soon enough he reached one of the buildings overlooking the fight. He breathed heavily, standing on the roof of the building. He heard someone approach him and when he looked up he saw the hero from earlier. He held back the urge to groan and hide his face in his hands. Bird Boy marched over to him and tilted his head. So eager to continue our conversation. Shut up. I need to watch the fight, he said, glaring. Need to or want to? There's no shame in wanting to see heroes fight. We do look pretty cool. He grinned and flexed his wings. Dabby snorted. Cocky and confident, just like every other hero. It's annoying. This is why he could never be a hero, even if he'd been raised right. His eyes diverted to the scene unfolding below on the streets. Endeavor was shooting flames out at a villain with a mutation quirk that seemed to give him fur, wings and a scorpion tail. Suspending in the air just above the fight was Alloy, his limbs being held up by constantly shifting metal pipes. His eyes trained on the flame hero. His methods hadn't changed much from what he could see. He was still brash, using force over strategy. His flames were direct, shooting in narrow columns at the villain, seemingly having no effect that he could work with. His own attacks had become more wild, using more heat to take up a big space, trapping his enemy, rather than going for direct blows like his father. A shuffling sound from beside him broke him out of his train of thought. Without looking away from Endeavor he muttered, Don't you have to go help them or something? You're useless just standing there. Now the man came to stand next to him. I don't really feel like being yelled for interfering today. See that analyst on the balcony he pointed to the building across from them. Dabby's eyes flicked to it and widened when he caught sight of tasseled green hair. Fucking hell. Of course Deku actually gets to watch the fight in person not just from the drones they sometimes have. Next to him was a woman in flannel that matched her red hair but that was as much of her feature as he could make out from this far away. She says it's hard enough to get Endeavor to listen and she doesn't need me to come swooping in to mess plans up too. Sounds like Endeavor, not listening to others. Birdbrain narrowed his eyebrows in what Dabby assumed was puzzlement. I don't think it's her plan today though. That green-haired kid must be the new intern one of the support technicians told me about. I'm excited to see how this turns out. He's supposed to be not half bad. So he's already made a name for himself outside of Revite? He hopes Deku knows what he's doing and doesn't draw too much attention to himself. If people get too suspicious Dabby doesn't want to be the one with ties connected to him. He watched Deku turn to the woman next to him, telling her something. Not long after the pattern of Alloy's pipes started to change. Dabby carefully picked out where he was putting the pipes and he realized they were making a trap. Most of his vision was trained on Endeavor, even as Bird Brain started talking excitedly next to him. Whatever plan they have might actually work, he said. That kid's pretty good. More like pretty annoying. What was that? Dabby shut his mouth, shaking his head. Nothing. Go do your hero shit. Birdie chuckled but remained at his side. If there's something that annoys Dabby, 
It's jerks we don't ever seems to leave him alone. Deku is annoying because he's a child and everything he says can't really be argued with. Heroes are annoying because they thinks they're the best. This guy, this guy is annoying because he's like a leech. The building they were on swayed and Abby stumbled on his feet. He ran into something and the next thing he knew he was being held up by bird brain. His hands were on his elbows as he held him steady, back flush against his chest. He scowled and shoved himself off. Dusting of the sleeves of his jacket he grumbled, don't catch me next time. Sorry, I just thought you wouldn't want to have to deal with a few extra scrapes on your body. It's not my fault the building sh is a funk you the concrete below their feet shifted again and they both struggled to keep their balance. Look, I'm willing to say it's from all the pipes alloy is taking we have to be careful or the whole building will. Below alloy's pipes wrapped around the villain, its wings smacking and ever and before Dabby had the chance to be amused by his father being launched into a wall, the building they were standing on started to collapse. His only thought as the concrete gave way underneath him was oh shit. And then he was falling. He squeezed his eyes shit tightly, preparing for impact. If he was going to die he didn't want the last thing he saw to be this ugly world, but he never hit ground. He peeled open his eyes to see bird brain flying in the air, held up by his massive red wings. He hadn't caught him, not technically. Dabby felt a tug on his jacket and looked up to see two red feathers holding him in the air. He frowned. He isn't sure whether dying or being saved by a hero is worse. I'll see you around vigilante the bird man called out, diving down to join the other heroes below while also forcing his feathers to drag Dabby away. He thrashed and kicked, trying to get loose from the darn red thing's grip. He tried to keep watching the fight or at least the aftermath of it but he was dragged too far away, too many buildings blocking his sight. Finally, he was set down in an alleyway. The feather released him and before it could zoom back to bird brain, he grabbed hold of it with his hands. He stared down at its intricate design as he squirmed in between his fingers. It's an interesting quirk. Not just wings but also feathers that can detach themselves and do tasks. He's starting to see why that man would be the number three hero. Sitting down on one of the wooden pallets stacked in the alley, he brought the feather close to his face. Darn heroes getting in his way. He barely managed to get any information on Endeavor in terms of fighting technique. The whole mission was pretty much pointless. He has to count on Deku to give him a report later. The gremlin really is lucky he always happens to be useful. The bird on the other hand, he is not useful. He got in the way and he was bothersome. He may have good looks and be the number three hero but Dabby could care less. Part of him wonders if he can convince Revi to put him on his list of bad heroes. He doesn't know much about the guy but he wouldn't be surprised if he was just another licensed villain. The sound of wings flapping was picked up by his ears and his lips tugged themselves into a frown. You've got to be kidding me. Hate to bother you again, bird brain said as he touched on in front of him. But it's hard to do hero work when there's the constant ache of someone playing with one of my feathers. Give it back and I can leave you to dear vigilante stuff or whatever you do. Dabby glanced at the feather in his hand. So he can still feel them after they're detached? He has to admit that's somewhat interesting. He twirled the feather in his hand, watching Birdie's partially blank resting face twitch into a frown. I'm a villain Dabby corrected. Not a vigilante. Whatever you say, just give me back my feather dude, he held out his hand palm up. What's with this guy? Most heroes would lunge at the opportunity to take down a villain, even a low one like himself. Why does he only care about the stupid feather? Is he really such a bad hero that he'll willingly let villains go? Eyes narrowing, he asked, why'd you save a villain? Why won't you turn me in? For one, I promised I wouldn't turn you in at the start and I don't go back on my promises, he sighed as if he wasn't sure why he was explaining all this. And two, what was I supposed to do? Let you collapse with that building. But I'm a villain. Vigilante. Villain. I do bad shit. Hmm. <clears throat> I still think you're more of a vigilante.